Africa. You ready to see Africa? Come on now, you ready to see Africa? So, today on stage, we're gonna run, we're gonna rock this. As you're hot, you're gonna get hotter. If you're blessed, you're gonna feel even more blessed. If you've never seen us before, welcome. If you've seen us before, welcome back. Okay, because we're about to do a great job on the stage today, bringing up the beauty of culture. Our ensemble has been sanctioned one of the best of this kind of African dance and drum. Uh, the children, the mothers, the fathers, everyone's on stage today in honor of Dr. Karinga. This is a tribute to our great creator of Kwanzaa, Dr. Lana Karinga. Everyone, put your hands together and bring it to the stage right now the sensational and electrifying Universal African Dance and Drum. as found in the message of Kwanzaa, is practicing the culture of Kwanzaa, living the seven principles. Yeah. Now it's easy if I say practicing the seven principles, you can see that, you know you go down it. But how do you practice the culture? How do you practice it? We know that you've got to have the principles to do it. And if you start with the first principle, just unity, a sense of oneness with each other, a caring togetherness. Hey, you're on the right path. But if you don't even get to the first one or get past or even through it, how do you say you're living the culture or practicing the principle or practicing the culture and living the principle? I just want you to think about that because in the final analysis, all of this is about our relationship. Yes, the hub and hinge on which the whole of human life turns a quality relationship. That's right. Quality relationship. We come into relationship even before we are born. Do y'all hear that? Yes. We're in relationship to our ancestors. We're in relationship to our mother and father yes. and to our other predecessors, right? But we're also in relationship with people that exist and with peach of people yet to come. Teach, teach. And we must be worthy of every relationship because every relationship carries with it an obligation. Yeah. And if we don't live up to the obligation, we're not worthy of the relationship. If I say I'm husband, I got to practice that. I can't be sometimey. Ask any woman that's suffered from the absent brother. Rest you if I'm wrong. The same is true for wife. Do you understand that? If I say I'm a brother, I got to be one in practice. I got to care. I got to share. I got, I got to be what the ancient Egyptians call sejimic. That means you listen and you respond according to the need. 
Sajimic. We have to be Sajimic, morally sensitive to each other. We have to be this anxious to honor each other. And we can't come to a nationalist event looking somber. I was in New York last night. I told the New York people, I'm going to tell y'all. You know what I mean? You can't sit there looking somber at this, as, as, as to say, looking serious is some indication of death. Well, now, I haven't even gotten to my lecture yet. This is called preface. But in a larger sense, I am in my lecture. Now, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you see, what is beautiful is when we feel. That's why even though I'm not a Christian, I like how excited the Christians are and how happy they are. You know what I mean? They on their way. <laughs> you, you understand? But the nationalists, the black thinking people. <laughs> You know, like, I don't know what, y'all tell me, what's the word? <laughs> Let's hope it's not Thunderbird. <laughs> <laughs> Dignity is what we want. <laughs> Evidence said we are bearers as our forefathers and mothers taught us. We are possessors of dignity and divinity. And we have an inherent worthiness that is transcendent of all secondary identity, and that it is equal in all, and that it is in alien, but nobody can take it from us. And we have to act in ways worthy of that title, worthy of that status. And so when we talk about practicing the culture of Kwanzaa and living the seven principles, we think about what it means to be African in the world. And if African doesn't mean excellence, it doesn't mean anything. It's not enough to claim to be African. It's always important to practice it. And if you practice it, people will see it and call you that. If they don't see it and you act out of line to an extreme degree, then they use wrong names. And so let us then talk specifically about this evening and this celebration that all over the world brings us as Africans in the millions together to sit just like you are now celebrating Kwanzaa. On every continent in the world, throughout the world African community. What a beautiful thought that we as Africans all over the world are doing the same thing in our honor celebrating ourselves without asking permission or we're trying to wait to diminish its importance. That's a very important thing. But I know it's hard for y'all to imagine you're celebrating yourself, right? I can tell by how you responded. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Philadelphia. And soul of the celebration of Kwanzaa is the ancient culture which serves as its source and sanction. When I say at the heart of and soul of the celebration of Kwanzaa is the ancient culture which serves as a source and sanction. If I say source, you know that's where it comes from, right? But if I say it's also a sanction, that means that we are our own authority. We are self-authorizing. We don't ask permission to celebrate ourselves. We don't ask permission to have a holiday. We declare it and then practice the culture which makes it possible. So there are three basic things at the heart and soul. The first is a culture. The second is in Guzo Saba, the seven principles, which are the hub and hinge on which the whole holiday turns. And third, it is the people, the creative, resourceful, resilient, and beautiful people we call African, who embrace the culture and principle as a living practice 
and an essential way of understanding and asserting themselves as Africans in the world. Indeed, the celebration of Kwanzaa reminds us that our culture is our unique and equally valid and valuable way of being human in the world. And it urges us to self-consciously celebrate and practice our culture, live its highest principle, and pass this sacred legacy on to future generations. This season of Kwanzaa, as we celebrate family, community, and culture around the world, and recommit ourselves to bringing and sustaining good in the world, we find ourselves deeply involved in the continuing quest and struggle for justice for our people. Indeed, the struggle that we're engaged in now is an ongoing struggle to free ourselves and to be ourselves as black people, as an African people, and to live the secure, good, fulfilling, and meaningful lives we all want and deserve to have. Do you realize it is wrong for us to walk out any day and not know whether our sons or our husbands or our fathers or our brothers will return? We shouldn't have to live under that condition. Rescue me if I'm wrong. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Just bring it. And so we're always struggling to free ourselves from that kind of oppression and to be ourselves as African people. Not penalized because we're different than the dominant society. Who are these people who think they can kill us with impunity? Who are these people who think that we can call off our demonstration and our struggle for justice because they ask for a favor? Oh, we're just, just killing innocent people. Hey, but what about all the innocent people that killed by them? Did they call a moratorium on that? Let them call a moratorium on killing us. Then we don't even have to demonstrate at all. You don't have to call a moratorium on demonstration. If you're killing nobody, good people wouldn't be discriminating against you, demonstrating against you. What kind of logic is that? Kill me and I just keep silent. So you know what Malcolm said. He said, the guy is good at image making. He's good at turning the table. He turns the criminal into a victim and the victim into a criminal. Look at it now. This year in the midst of a rising tide of resistance against police violence, general systemic violence, and racial and social violence, we remember and reaffirm Kwanzaa's ancient and modern origin and the cultural views, values, and practices which undergird and inform this global Pan-African celebration. For they offer in excellent ways, they offer us excellent ways forward on the upward path of our ancestors and culture. We need to follow the excellent ways forward on the upward path of our ancestors and culture. Right. If we're not following the upward path of our own culture, we are doing ourselves a disservice. Yes. And we're teaching the generation behind us to have contempt for us yes. and to find comfort in the arms and other places of the oppression. Tell the truth, Mom. Just tell it, brother. We are the fathers and mothers of human civilization. Yes, yes. How do we turn and ask our present for answers to questions of life and meaning? Yes. How do we ask them the way forward when he's been pushing us back and down so long? I'm just asking you that. How do we do that? How do we fix our mouth to pay homage to our oppressor, to make excuses for his killings of us, to get off him and start talking about what we're doing. As if there's not a difference between somebody killing you under the color and camouflage of law and an outlaw that's lost his sense of humanity killing somebody close. That's a whole different kind of thing. With the outlaw, everybody knows that's an outlaw, so sooner or later they catch him, they're gonna do something to it. But they can catch the police that kills under the color and camouflage of law, and he's let off. 
Yeah, tell the truth. Rescue me if I'm wrong. Tell the truth. Just pray. Tell the truth. Why am I talking about this at Kwanzaa? Because Kwanzaa has two, uh, two uh, uh, sources. An ancient source that talks about the cooperative creation and sharing of good, and a modern source, the Black Freedom Movement, that teaches self-determination, yeah. cultural grounding and cultural revolution, yeah. and relentless righteous struggle. Yeah. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's right. So we can't talk about our culture in the abstract. Right. We gotta talk it in its lived concreteness, right. and the concrete conditions of our lives. That's right. That's right. right. People always how can how quads help us do this? Hey, you got to help us. The holiday provides principles you can use by which you can repair and renew and transform our lives in the midst of repairing and transforming this society and the world. So practice the principles. Live the principles. Right. Can't be a Sunday kind of thing. Right. Kwanzaa's ancient and modern origins are important then. Kwanzaa has as its early origins. It has its early origins in the ancient first fruit or first harvest celebrations of Africa. And thus, it provides us with a time of remembrance, of reflection, and recommitment. It provides us with a time of focus on the cooperative creation and sharing of good in the world. The modern origins of Kwanzaa are in the Black Freedom Movement, as I said, and we are informed by conversations, and it is informed by conversations and activities around freedom, self-determination, justice, cultural grounding, cultural revolution, return to the African soil for models of human excellence and human achievement, and for stress on righteous and relentless struggle to free ourselves and be ourselves as African peoples in the world. And so if you read the seven principles, you will notice that the original and enduring language of the Nguzo Saba, or the seven principles, and of Kawaita philosophy out of which Kwanzaa and the Nguzo Saba are created, you get language like striving, struggling, building, developing, and maintaining good in the world. And we do this in the interest of our people, but always with rightful attention to the rest of the world. Rightly read and reflected upon then, in a deep and meaningful way, then Guzo Sabo reveal a rich array of cultural values, especially emphasis on life, community, culture, spiritual and ethical grounding, and the ethics of struggle for good for ourselves and the world. And as cultural values and practices, they reflect the way we conceive and live our lives, build and nurture our relationship, understand and carry out our obligations, and decide on and do our work, as well as determine, plan, and wage our struggle. So we're talking about practicing the values of your culture. That's what we're doing. We use them to what? Conceive and live our lives. How do you conceive an African life? A righteous life? Not, not something borrowed from our oppressor. Our oppressor cannot be our teacher. No. Our oppressor cannot be our teacher. He cannot be our advisor. He cannot be our mentor. And he certainly cannot be our judge. So if we practice our culture, our culture teaches us how to conceive and live our lives. First. Second, how to build and nurture our relationships. I'm back to that relationship. See? You can't just talk about emoji in the abstract. Let's talk about how you relate to each other. How do we solve conflict? Conflict is going to come up. Who's living in a world where there's no conflict? Wait your hand so we can get the address. <laughs> the problem is not that we have conflict, it's how we solve it. Whether we are consumed by it rather than strengthened by solving it. If we are consumed by conflict, we're defeated. 
if we are strengthened by our, pardon me, if we are strengthened by our conflict, we in fact develop and grow. And we can teach other people how to bring peace in the world. We can't talk peace in the abstract. So Hushia says, exceedingly good is a practice of peace. And there is no blame in peace for those who practice it. How do we practice peace? It is not just the absence of conflict, as Martin Luther King said. He said it's not just the absence of conflict, but it's also the presence of justice. Fairness, doing what is right, what is good, what is due. And the first due is to each other. We say, hey, always, whenever you go into anything, put the person before the point. Hold the person, you can eventually make the point. Lose the person, you can't make no point. You can ask your wife, your husband, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your child. You lose the person, you can't make no point. No matter how good it is. You know if people hate you, they ain't gonna listen to you. Rescue me if I'm wrong. So how we build our relationship dictates how we practice our culture. Right? Right? Yes. It also teaches us how to understand and carry out our obligations. A lot of times because we live into a world where obligations are imposed on us by the dominant society. And I say dominant society, but y'all know I'm talking about the white man, right? Yeah. The dominant society imposes obligations on us be fighting in our name, making war in our name, killing in our name, right? Yeah. So we don't want no obligation. But we need obligations to each other. We need to speak truth and do justice. Yeah. Be kind and caring. Yeah. And do not do evil, the old do if I say. Speak truth, do justice. Be kind and do not do evil. But those who are righteous are favored by the divine. Yeah. We have to remember that. We have to be kind. Why did you think the ancestors put that in there? Wow. That's why they said one of the ways we build the world we want is to love doing good. Yes, and they say love doing good because if you try to do good and you do it with hatred, you poison the it act itself. Yes, I've given you this example before. You go and you're in need and you go and ask somebody to help you and they give you a lecture. Oh. You tell hey, I didn't come here for that, you gone. If it's about money, you throw it on the ground. You don't even want to be associated. It's tainted money. Oh, some people don't have no dignity, they'll pick it up. Uh oh. But I'm talking about the average black person. I'm talking about us at our best. We have to love doing good. We have to decide, use our culture to decide on and do our work and determine and plan our struggle. So let's go through these principles real quick. But, you know, on the line, I'm gonna lecture a little while on them. But let's start with Umoja. Umoja! Umoja! Uh, see if you can say the principles, please. Umoja! Umoja! All right, black people. Umoja. Unity! Unity! This principle teaches us not just to strive for unity, in the family, community, and culture, but it cultivates in us an active commitment to a caring togetherness in our families and communities as African people. It's not an abstract thing to strive for unity. It is to strive to create in yourself an active commitment right. to a caring togetherness. Yes. Yes. I'm unified with my house. Yes. I care. Anything she wants, I try to get. If I can get it, I work to get it. And the same thing with me. We're talking mutuality here. Reciprocity here. But my first thing is caring, so that even if I can't get it there, she knows I care. So it's not an issue. 
Yeah. You understand? It's an issue when people don't care, and the only thing they got linking them is things. Uh, material things, right? Yeah. And they count what you do for them and how you like them by what you can give them. And if you can't give them something, hey, you ain't no good. <laughs> what did the little sister tell me when I was counseling a man female relationship? Dr. Kering, I can be poor by myself. <laughs> this man got to have some money. <laughs> I say it, but it's true. Good. Okay, tell me, tell me I have to go real fast. Okay, now here it is. It fosters a genuine sense of kinship and shared interests of common good with other humans. And it calls for a special solidarity with other oppressed and struggling people in the world who are in righteous and relentless resistance just like us. This principle of emoji urges respect for the sacredness and interrelatedness of life and a profound sense of oneness with the world and an ethical responsibility for its well-being and flourishing. Second principle, Kuji Chagulia. Self-determination. Self it reaffirms our right and responsibility of each person and people to determine our own destiny and daily life, to speak our own special culture truth, and to make our own unique contribution to reconceiving and reconstructing society in the world. And it commits us to mutual respect for all persons as possessors of dignity and divinity, entitled to equal rights and to equal treatment and to shared goods of the world for each people and culture. The principle of Ujima. Ujima. Collective work and responsibility. Collective work and responsibility. Teaches us that we are all, each and all, responsible for building the good life we want to live. Yeah. And for building the care and community to justice society in the good world we want to live in and lead for future generations. If you want a good life, you've got to take responsibility for building it. If you want a good relationship, you've got to take responsibility for rebuilding. And you've got to do it together. You can't do it by yourself. Oh, I'm working over you. No, please. That's something from the dominant society. That's the wolf man attitude, running off in the hill to live with dogs because they can't handle people. These are the people that call their pets persons. They renamed the dog a son and a daughter. Whatever you feel for a dog, you have enough sense to know that's not your daughter. cannot be our teacher. That's why we need each other as mirrors to ourselves, reflecting strength and weaknesses. The good and the bad, things that need to be corrected and things that need to be praised. And don't always come being negative. That's why a lot of times people don't want to hear about quality people telling what they can't do. But they haven't read the book to know what to do. That's why it's easy to say what not to do. They're not even sure that's right, but hey, let's go on. Get the book. There's no quick way to grind, Like there's no quick way to love. There's no quick way to life. No quick way to religion. No deep spirituality is quick. Can't read no book for dummies on religion. Okay, I got to go, okay? It calls on us to engage the problems of our brothers and sisters as our own and to solve them together, okay? And to recognize we're responsible to and for each other in our shared work and struggle to bring in good and sustain it in the world. Ujama teaches us an essence of shared work and wealth and the good and rightfulness of cooperative creation and sharing of good of the world. It calls on us to give rightful respect and just treatment to work workers and due consideration and care to the poor and the vulnerable, to care for the environment and to resist corporate and other plunder and pollution and depletion of the world. Nia, yeah. purpose, permits us to work to realize the collective vocation and the ancient African ethical period found in the Ojuifa to constantly bring good into the world and not let any good be lost. For it is written that we're divinely chosen to bring good into the world, but we must choose to be chosen and act in ways worthy of the divine choice and assignment to constantly bring good into the world. Moreover, as Marcus Garvey taught us, we must always work 
to restore African, African people to their proper place. As quote, he said, a bright star among the constellations of nations. Not a twittering and tinkling star, but a bright star among the constellations and nations of the world. Kumba! Creativity teaches us to do always as much as we can in the way we can in order to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than we inherited. This is the ancient Egyptian teaching of Saru's time. They said we are morally responsible for the well-being of the world and all in it. And therefore we must raise up what is in ruin, repair what is damaged, replenish what is depleted, rejoin what is severed. Set right what is wrong, strengthen what is weakened, and make flourish that which is fragile and undeveloped. And finally, Imani, Imani. Faith. faith teaches us to embrace the beautiful and unbreakable faith of our forefathers and foremothers. How do they have an unbreakable faith? They believe in the good and the eventual triumph of that good. And they link their faith to hard work, their hope to righteous struggle, and their prayer to a transformative practice. They knew you can't just hope. They knew you can't just believe, but that you got to work and you got to struggle and you got to engage in transformative practice. This faith is a faith founded and forged in millennia, righteous and relentless struggle, and tested and tempered in the times of increased depression, seemingly hopelessness, and delayed victories, and awesome setback that would have defeated those less steadfast and determined. But this faith, I say of our mothers and fathers, our foremothers and forefathers, this faith shelters no illusion, and it knows from insight and experience that practice proves and makes possible everything. That, and that only righteous and relentless struggle will redraw the map of human history that leads to a hard world, one world of kindness and caring, mutual respect, justice, peace, well-being, security, substantive freedom, and rightful human flourishing. And thus, it is on us, African people, yes. black people, it is on us to hold our ground, build on and expand our game, and continue to push the battle lines and lives of our people ever forward. For this is ever our duty, to know our past and honor it, to engage our present and improve it, and to imagine a whole new future, and to forge it in the most ethical, effective, and expansive way. Head is our crimes, a happy crimes. Wow.